Okay guys, so here the Project City TV. Uh, a lot of people has been, uh, have been asking me more concepts instead of a uh, position, which is, you know, one way is very good. Sometimes it's a lot more important that, you know, know how to position yourself than trying to attack straight away. And uh, especially the mount, you know, the most important thing, you have to secure the mount first. Once you're comfortable, in, that you can spend some time there in working on the submission, then, uh, you know, you don't have to worry too much about repositioning yourself all the time. Of course, you know, that has to do with, ev with every movement. There is, there's always adjustment, but you know, I'll try to give you guys some uh, concepts, some ideas, you know, before you go for the attack. So, yeah, let's go. So, usually, you know, people, they have a uh, different concepts, different approach in the amount. I'm gonna try to give you guys an idea Thing that I'm usually looking for. So, as soon as I mount someone, before you know you go for submission, your main concern you should be holding the mount. You know, especially as soon as you mount, you have that burst of energy with the person. They try to escape straight away. You know, you have the, the like five seconds uh, frame that they you know they, they they explode. If they don't escape, you know usually they settle down a little bit. Otherwise, they will spend the the whole, the, the whole energy trying to escape. But uh, yeah, two things that you have to, to worry about mainly. There's a few different escapes that the person can do, but you know, in my opinion, there's two that is, is used the most. Is the, the bridge, the upa, you know, they hold one arm, they bridge you over, and they, they, they come on top of you, or they'll start pushing your leg to put them back in the guard. I think those are the main ones that people use the most. You might find a few other ones, but the percentage that you know the people use that is much less. You don't have to worry too much about them, and because people use less, they're not as effective as those two. Uh, for example, people that you know, people with long legs and flexible legs that they you know they they push and they bring the both legs in to try to wrap on your body and to throw you back. Uh, it's. You know, it's not the most flexible guy to, oh. to, to, to bring the legs in. I but I would say, you know, when the legs come, yeah, bring, bring the legs in, you know. No, Fipe, no, stay there. No, when the leg comes, my main concern, it should always be to keep my arms between his legs and my body. As long as the legs are on my body, no problem. As long as my arm is inside, I can always push the legs out. The problem is when you get caught that he's managed to put the leg between my arm. Now, you know, this, it will drag. I cannot, now he's hooking my arm in, in sort of a way. And it's hard for me to remove his leg out. And by the time I try to remove, that's when they throw me back because now the leg is against my body. That's the danger. If he pushes my body, my body will go. So every time he does that, if you get caught, you have to, as fast as you can, bring the hand in. Because when the person starts pushing the body, I can remove his legs out. So always on the inside. And every time they do that, the arms, they have to push against my body, which he exposed in the arm lock. So when the leg comes, usually they can go on the arms, always on the inside. Keep your elbows in and keep knocking the arms out. I would say, I'm pretty successful defending that but as long as they like come outside of my arm if they come inside most likely you're gonna be taken out of the, the mount so and if you get caught on the outside bring them in push the leg out as fast as you can so that is a uh, number one second with the two main skates with the upa and the elbow limb what you don't want Every time you're in a low mount that you sit up straight, it has to be difficult for the person to bring the elbow between my leg and his body. If his arm is there, every attack I try to do is, is in jeopardize because I have to deal with this. I cannot ignore it and try to attack. I cannot do both at the same time. It's very hard to attack the neck or the arm while his arm is here because this is not a good position to me, most likely you will fail. So you have to deal with that. So I would say the very secure way to deal with that, I mean, first, you know, if I can, you can pull his arm out. If I manage to remove his arm, 
and bring my, uh, my leg back in. I'll say that's a simple way to do it. But especially if the person is very strong, he can keep his arms locked, he start turning side is to go. That's when the problems start happening. I would say when they push, they will always push the knee first. So you know, usually when they go that your body, you know, it can be slightly bent forward is to get to this position quick. It's hard to go very high over his body. If you can do that, that's great. You have a great chance of attacking his arm, but just by turning my body sideways, the knee that he was pushing, he can extend his arm, and that's as far as it goes, and I'm still secure. Because my foot, it has to be very close to his body. So, going back there again, slowly. So he managed to put the elbow inside. So now, my foot is already very close to his hips. So, slowly push my knee. So he's pushing my knee, so I let the knee go, and I just keep my foot on the on the floor, which now I'm start threatening his, you know, his back, the arm. So I adjust my position. I just defend. Usually they go for the knee. Now when they feel the knee won't go anymore, then they'll start going for the foot. So it's it's another step which is easier for me to defend. Because now I have two hands. I can hold him on the elbow, then I can push him back. And then when I go, you know, from that position straight away, I'll be in a high mount. So now it's very hard for him to get the elbow back in. The only way for him to do that, he had to gain space. He, he had to start sliding his body up. Now the elbow in. So you, you go now, you'll be stop the body sliding over. So he won't gain that space back in because now he just pull you back. You know, his elbows are gonna go in, I'm defending. You know, you keep going back to the same thing which you know sometimes when you fight it does happen you just gotta keep going and back to the to the same thing again another way to deal with that it's to switch hands on the floor now i'm going to push my legs back in and i'm going to cross my feet because if i'm sitting on him as long as the arm is there he can still remove the leg so my goal is to push my leg under his so I'm gonna push the legs in. If I can cross my feet, that's great, because now he has no escape to put him back in the guard, because his legs are trapped. Like I'm sort of closing my guard in sort of a way, so I'm trapping his legs, and now it's very hard for him to to put me back. And now I can hold the head. Now this it gives me a strong position, especially to hold. It's not a it's not a very strong offensive position because. I have to move out of here to attack. You now I have the Ezekiel. That's one thing that will stop him pushing the leg straight away because I'm gonna start threatening his neck. But this, if you try to bridge, is extremely hard. Usually one hand is free. So he would only bridge the other way. But this, every time he bridges, I'm gonna arch my body and I'm gonna hold his leg tight. So I'm going against his movement. When he wanna bridge, he wanna push the head back and raise his hips up. Now I'm going to arch my body, forcing his hips to the mat and holding his head. You can uh, practice that with your partner. You will find it's very hard to bridge from this position. So from here, I can start threatening the Ezekiel, which he has to start to stop pushing my legs straight away because he has to deal with this. And now I can start coming underneath his arm, bring the leg up. Same thing with the other one. Now that puts me in a high mount and for him so now to stop the person sliding his body up after I'm in a high mount what happened is the first thing that they do they open the elbows because the elbows has to go against my leg then will push themselves up see that's he has to the only way for him to gain that space as long as I can keep his elbows close together in a high mount if he doesn't have anything to push against me, he won't go. He will not push the inside of my hips to slide his body up, because this is as far as the arm goes. Either one or both, he has to go against my thigh. Now he can push and he will slide his body up. He has to, or against my leg. So, if you're in a high mount, I'll say, I like to go put my hands right behind his elbow to avoid this movement.
as long as he cannot open his elbows he cannot push himself up so here if I'm sitting nice and straight my hands are usually behind his elbow pulling presses I'm not contracting I'm not using a lot of power because he's not going to use a lot of power constantly to do that I just keep the elbows tight to me you know taking my time securing now I can't think of going to the you know choke getting the hand inside either one or the other or going behind the elbow to start attacking the arm lock but I'll see as soon as I have a, a high mount control the elbow don't let him do that if you open his elbow he'll push himself up as long as his elbow is here right in front of him it's uh, very difficult to gain that space let's say it does happen he push his sliding I can straight away go to a secure position hold the head then back to the same thing start attacking the Ezekiel the cross arm it has to come so that gives me space to bring that leg the arm is free push I let it go in. always back to the mount again and always in that transaction then you know start looking for the choke getting behind the elbow to mount and you know it's always that repetition repetition and trying to to to, to get the timing right to attack you know you don't want to attack when you're not strongly positioned he cannot be trying to escape and then you go for attack that's quite dangerous you know get a strong position and then go for the attack and also when I get a high amount so that means my body is no longer sitting on top of his hips so when you think about the bridging when he bridges the power generates from the hips the hips is going to elevate me and throw me out so when I sit in the high mount I come off his hips then I start going to his chest more or less on the chest line the plexus so that makes it harder for him because if you want to breathe, uh, breathe I'm sitting right on top of his lungs it's already harder you know usually there was a big fight to reach them out the person's already a little bit tired, you know, from resisting. You get them out, you know, the breathing is never yeah, easy. So this already put pressure on him. If he bridges, it's, uh, I'm no longer on his hips. And by holding in a high mount, if you want to bridge, I can use both hands. It's even the, the leverage for him to bridge. You know, my hands, I can easily reach in the hands, especially by holding both of his arms. Even if I give one of my arms, if he bridges, I can move to the arm. My second hand can go to, to the floor. In worst case, posi worst case position, if you feel threatening with the bridge, you control one hand, lean forward, place the other hand on the floor straight away. This, it should be enough to stop the bridge. If not, then you can use your forehead on the floor. By the time he bridges, it's my head would defend. And I can push myself back so instead of using the, the arm that he's blocking he's holding I'll have the hand in my forehead straight away the moment that he grabs something you want to put the hand on the floor to block that bridge another thing that is very important it's regardless how high and how low you are in the mount the knees they vary if I want to wide my knees to be heavier you can do that if I want to you know tight everything up my knees goes close together so that means I'm lighter on him so there's not a lot of pressure so the knees they vary the one thing that does not is your feet the sole, the sole of your feet is always glued on the person's body it's every time he bridges or he does anything if there's any gap between my foot and his body that's space for the person to escape it's, that means you loosen yourself up from your partner you want to be very tight when he moves, you want to block his, his movement with your body. So you don't want him, uh, his body free to do it, whatever he wants. You want to stop, block that movement. This is very important, very important. Regardless of what you're trying to do, the sole, the sole of your feet, always on him. If he bridges, down, it does never leave him. Doesn't matter what happened. Even, even if I get taken down. People that bridge and they, do this, it's a massive gap there. That should never happen. You should never use your leg to stop the bridge because you stop in the bridge, but there will be a massive gap that there he can bring his legs in and uh, get you out. So, hope you guys enjoy it.